Uh, hi, uh, good morning everyone. Uh, the title of the uh, talk changed just a tiny bit. Uh, so, neurological deficit or disease type. Sorry. Um, so, uh, the data uh, for this, um, for this study, <coughs> the data for this study was um, collected by uh, the NeuroCure Center in the Charité uh, University in Berlin. No, just, okay, okay um, I'll try this one, sorry, um, okay, so what is optic neuritis? Um, it is an inflammatory disease uh, of the optic nerve uh, causing demyelination of the myelin sheath and through it acute visual loss uh, with pain upon eye movement. It afflicts generally healthy, relatively young adults uh, it's typically uh, monocular and is considered transient uh, for the most part, uh, though residual effects uh, remain years after the attack. In this uh, example on the left, uh, you can see a healthy uh, optic nerve in which the intact myelin sheath enables the uh, fast and smooth transfer of information from the eye down the visual pathway. On the right, on the other hand, is a damaged optic nerve in which the, uh, the demyelination, has, in de uh, demyelination has occurred uh, and it slows down the flow of information and sometimes even uh, blocking it entirely. Um, optic neuritis uh, can appear in uh, several forms. It can appear on its own as a clinically isolated syndrome, but can also be a manifestation of uh, multiple sclerosis, an M uh, MS, and it is also a characteristic symptom of another inflammatory disease called NM uh, neuromyelitis optica spectrum disorder, uh, disorder or NMOSD. Um, recovery from a demyelinating attack usually includes remyelination, the rebuilding of the myelin sheath. Uh, but as we and others have suggested in the past, it may also be facilitated by compensatory mechanisms. Um, now, in a previous study that was published last year, uh, we looked into the changes in anatomical wiring and functional networking, comparing uh, a group of clinically isolated um, or early MS patients with optic neuritis to a group um, of uh, patients with other types of presenting episodes, uh, sensory or motor. Uh, considering the visual pathway using, using uh, diffusion tensor imaging, uh, we have shown that beyond the very local damage caused by the optic nerve uh, lesion itself, um, there were no changes in uh, distant anatomical wiring. On the other hand, the functional visual network as explored using resting state fMRI, a method in which the uh, subject lies with their eyes closed doing nothing uh, during, uh, during the scan, uh, we saw that um, the, we saw changes in functional connectivity in the optic uh, neuritis group compared to those with other uh, episodes. We saw stronger functional connectivity in the optic, in these patients, uh, in the entire visual network. Uh, we concluded from this that functional network modification may be part of the recovery process. In this current study, uh, we wanted to further these conclusions. So we first wanted to better pinpoint the where. Where in the visual system do changes relevant to recovery occur? Do they happen in the entire system or are they more localized than that? Our second aim was to see, since optic neuritis is not unique to multiple sclerosis, are the changes we've seen in the MS patients driven by the disease or by the visual uh, neurological deficit itself? So if in our first project uh, we looked only at the neurological deficit comparing uh, optic neuritis uh, to patients with other clinically isolated episodes, uh, in this study we expanded our scope uh, comparing two inflammatory diseases of the CNS, uh, MS and NMOSD. So in this study we have four groups all collected in the Charité uh, University in Berlin, uh, optic ne uh, neuritis uh, with uh, a background of uh, multiple sclerosis, uh, background of multiple sclerosis with other uh, episodes, uh, uh, sensory and motor, uh, a background of NMOSD with optic neuritis, and uh, a group of healthy control subjects. 
Now, if in the previous study uh, we looked at the visual system uh, as a single component, in this study we used an atlas containing uh, 25 regions of interest per hemisphere, divided into ventral temporal, dorsolateral, and, uh, and parietal frontal um, regions. Uh, using uh, these, uh, using uh, the resting state data from the last study, uh, we constructed connectivity matrices. Uh, if the fMRI signal recorded from one region uh, correlated to, um, to the signal uh, recorded from another region, then these, uh, and, and this correlation was above a, a certain threshold, then uh, these two regions were considered to be connected. <coughs> now, these uh, thresholded and uh, binarized matrices enabled us to translate the networks into graphs and therefore use uh, graph theory-based uh, formulas to uh, further explore the, the system. Now, uh, we first looked at the general connectivity strength and topology by examining the degree of each region, uh, the degree being how many uh, immediate directly connected neighbors does one region have. So uh, if a region has uh, three neighbors, then its degree is three. Uh, in the following uh, results, you can see the subdivisions, the ventral temporal in red, the dorsolateral in blue, and the parietal frontal uh, in green. Uh, the size of a given region is the relative degree in the network, uh, and disconnected uh, network we're giving an arbitrary size. <clears throat> Here you can see uh, the vis visualization of the group graphs. Now, if you look at the uh, two groups that we have previously examined, uh, the, result here, the results here are not surprising. Even uh, in this new method, the old data shows the optic neuritis group is more connected than that of those with other symptoms. On the other hand, when we compare the uh, two optic neuritis groups the, from MS and NMOSD background, uh, we see greater similarity between the graphs. And when comparing the results of all these groups to the healthy controls, uh, we can see that the healthy controls are more connected in all three uh, region subdivisions, doesn't matter uh, where. So qualit uh, qualitatively, uh, we can see a pattern where the healthy controls are the most connected, followed by both optic neuritis groups with um, the connectivity strength of the patients uh, with other uh, symptoms being last. Uh, this part, this uh, pattern was also seen quantitatively using the density metric, which tells us how densely connected the network is, dividing the number of actual connections in the network with the number of potential connections. And we see, the, uh, we see exactly the same pattern. However, uh, when we looked at the degree of each region, trying to see if the pattern holds true in the entire visual network, we found that while some early regions do display it, it is mainly seen in the dorsolateral regions and chiefly in the MT region. Now, why is this so important? <clears throat> When we consider the visual system, uh, we often refer to the, uh, the two-stream model, the what ventral stream and the where-how uh, dorsal stream. The dorsal stream takes care, among other functions, uh, of the processing of what we call uh, dynamic functions, such as motion perception, uh, which is done in the MT region. Um, <clears throat> it is known uh, from previous re research that one of the functions most damaged in optic neuritis, which also persists the longest, is motion perception. So this suggests to us an attempt in compensating for the damaged function. Another way to look at the network using graph theory is by looking at its segregation and integration properties. Uh, segregation, the ability for specialized processing to occur within densely interconnected groups of brain regions, can be measured using modularity, uh, the ability of the network to be divided into such groups of regions. Uh, integration, the ability to rapidly combine the specialized information from distributed brain regions, uh, can be measured using a characteristic path length, which is the average of the shortest path between any two um, regions in the, in the network on which such uh, metrics such as uh, efficiency are based. These uh, metrics reveal a different pattern in which the MS background groups both show reduced modularity and longer path lengths and lower efficiency, uh, while the NMOSD group remains remarkably preserved in these properties. Now, so to summarize, um, in the study, we looked at the properties of the visual network in two disease groups and two types of symptoms groups. 
Uh, we looked at the general topology and connectivity strength, as well as information transfer efficiency, and have seen two decidedly different patterns showing that the optic neuritis groups are both similarly affected in network strength, and that the MS groups show reduced information transfer efficiency. Now, uh, while the effects of the uh, neurological deficit increase uh, connectivity irrelevant of disease type, both in this study and uh, in previous studies conducted separately, NMS and NMOSD, uh, the, reduction in information, uh, the reduction in information transfer efficiency is caught specifically uh, by the disease background. Uh, even if the lesion load is similar in the visual pathway uh, between optic neuritis in either background, it is known that the white matter tracts in MS uh, are less intact even if they appear normal to the casual eye. So, uh, in this study we have looked at the functional network modification caused by optic neuritis. We wanted to know if there was uh, a specific region in which changes uh, relevant to recovery may occur and found them mainly in dorsolateral regions of the visual system relevant to the damage motion perception processing observed after optic neuritis. We also conclude that while the general disease load in MS may affect uh, network information processing abilities, it is the type of disability um, uh, uh, sustained by the brain that the uh, compensatory effects uh, observed in our study um, and that drives the compensatory uh, effects observed in our study. So uh, I'd like to thank everyone in my lab uh, and uh, our collabor collaborators in Berlin. And uh, thank you for giving me the, the opportunity uh, to talk in this event. Uh, if there are any questions, I'll be happy to answer them.